What's up, fellow hackers? We are ready for the final and most funny part. After reverse engineering the logic of a protocol, it's time to generate custom messages and send them right back to the target. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. We will use this signal, which is captured from a wireless remote control to switch a wireless socket for demonstration. First of all, let's see where the relevant parts of these messages are by performing a quick differential analysis. So let's jump to that tab, hit that checkbox and scroll a bit through the data. Ah, gotcha. Here we can see a difference. And what we also observe is that the first six messages are repeated. They are exactly the same. And the last six messages are also exactly the same. So this is a quite dumb protocol, which quite often repeats the same commands. And the real interesting information is located here. As we got the wireless socket, we can assume that this is the on off information. So let's create a label for this, call it on off information and we are good to go. Now let's jump into the generator tab and start by dragging and dropping this data into the generation table. Let's set the view type to hex and search for our label. Here it is. As you can see, the label got copied to the generation view. This table is completely editable. So you might say, ah, maybe this should be a four and this should also be a four. And maybe here we make a B out of it, see what happens. So you are free to edit uh, these kind of data to get them in the shape you want. I might also delete certain messages. As we saw, the first six messages get repeated. So let's say I want to delete these three messages, simply hitting the delete key and they are gone. And maybe I also want to delete the last three messages. So I get only six left in total. If you have a more complex protocol with many labels on it, you don't want to edit these values by hand. You want to do this in an automated fashion. And that's why the Universal Radio Hacker comes with a powerful fuzzing component. You can fuzz every label you have assigned to the protocol. You might also create new labels just for the purpose of fuzzing. Um, let's fuzz this on off information label right here. Just hit edit fuzzing label and we can set the values this label should use by hand using this plus sign. We can add them manually. We can also remove them. But what makes this so powerful is that you can also do this in a automated fashion. Like um, let's add the values from zero to 100, hit that button and boom, here they are. We can also add boundary values or even random values from a range. So let's add three random values. They are appended. Here they are. Now let's save this and activate this fuzzing label. You see we have 104 values we added to this label. If I hit this fuzz button, the new messages will be generated. Let's do it. And here there are our new messages. 
with this on off information label fast. What is left to do before um, firing these fast messages right back to the target is we need to edit the carrier frequency of the modulation. You can do this here. Just hit that edit button. What we want to do is we grab our signal and drop it right here. And if you have loaded such a signal, you can let the universal radio hacker do the dirty work for you and auto detect the carrier frequency from this original signal. So let's do it. And there we have it. Let's verify this by entering some bits we want to compare against. So let's do this one zero one zero and show the data sequence inside the original signal. And maybe we lock the samples in view to the original signal. And um, you can see that we quite good hit this frequency of the original signal and our modulation sample rate and bit length is also good to go. So we are ready to generate the data. You may generate the data and save them to a file to see what the universal radio hacker would do. This is useful for debugging modulation problems, but for now, let's send the data right with a software defined radio and get things cracking. You see it modulates the data. Now we are good to go. Let me choose my software defined radio, which is a hack RF. What the universal hacker just did in the background for me was to apply the original decoding of the data to my custom generated data and after that modulating the data so it is ready to be sent to the software defined radio. So let's hit that play button and see what happens. As you can see it has to send quite a lot because we have crafted so many fuzzing messages. So it has some work to do now. Maybe we pause it and first remove some fuzzing messages to make things a bit quicker. So let's say from two until um, here, we simply delete it. Um, maybe we also delete this one. And we may also edit the pauses between messages. So you can see I can edit each pause here. Let's say after this message, the pause should be a bit higher, maybe like this. So we have one second pause. And now let's send this data again. You see it worked quite faster now because we have not that many messages like before. So let's hit that send button again. And you see it sends the data. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but my wireless socket is clicking like hell right now because we keep sending on off signals. So let's um, stop doing this. And that's it. We successfully hacked an Internet of Things device. I hope these videos gave you a good impression of the features of the Universal Radio Hackers. If you have questions or ideas or even want to contribute to the software, do not hesitate to contact us on GitHub. You find the link to the GitHub repository in the video description. So long, hack like a boss.